one of my ogre in the house, um, his name is Today Marking Day, and I've known him for over a year, and he's going to be taking us on Azure Backup and Disaster Recovery. Okay, everything around backing up on Azure and how to do failover on Azure, um, he will be explaining it to us. And for people that are not, um, that want to learn how to do backups on Azure and disaster um, disaster recovery on Azure, I think this is a this is a very good section that we need to to watch. Okay, so over to Mr. Tunde Makinde. Oh, sorry, Pop. Can you repeat, uh, can you repeat the last statement? Sorry, I wasn't hearing you very well. Okay, so what I was saying is that. Um, this lecture is for mostly for people that needs to understand backup. So if you, uh, I'm just talking to the general public that um, okay. if they need to understand backup, this is the best um, section they could connect to uh, to learn about backing up on Azure and filling over. Yeah. And I have here my ogre, Mr. Tunde Makinde. Yeah. So you can take over from here. Yeah. Thank you very why, much, sir. Why are you doing this to me? I know you're going to know. <laughs> Hi everyone. Let's take this off. off. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone. My name is Sunde Makinde. As um, okay, I'm a cloud solution architect and um, also. <laughs> Hello. Can we all mute our mic? Okay, please. Um, can we all mute our mics, please? Please, it's important. Can we all mute our mics? <laughs> Mr. Tunde, hold on. Okay, so, let's, okay. Every, everybody mute his mics. If you have any question, you don't need to put on your mic. Just put it in the chat box. Mr. Tunde is going to be looking at the chat box to a, a, answer some of the questions we have so that we could have an interrupted section, okay? So if you have any question, just put it in the chat. You don't need to speak the question out until after the class. Thank you very much. Okay, Tom, thank you, Paul. Okay, so... <clears throat> Tony Mackinde, Cloud Solution Architect. Um, what tells again about me? I've been doing Azure for the past um, six years, um, since 2014. And um, basically, Azure is very wide. So I don't know everything about Azure, but I know some basic services that you know you can leverage on, on Azure. Um, tonight, I'll be talking about the uh, first and foremost, let me appreciate Paul for bringing, bringing up this initiative. Uh, kudos to him. Um, I've known Paul as son that is very determined, and I really appreciate that character in name. Please ignore any dog sound you hear at the background. Please forgive me for that. Okay, so can you hear me, please? Hello? Yeah, I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. Okay, that's cool. Thanks. Okay, so I'll be talking about Azure Backup and um, Disaster Recovery um, during this class. Um, Basically, you know, organizations adopt a business continuity and disaster recovery plan strategy, you know, in order to keep their data safe and um, probably doing planned and unplanned outage or maintenance or anything. But most organizations fail to think outside the box. What do I mean? You know, they wait to when there's a disaster before they start thinking about backup or a business continuity plan or a disaster recovery plan. So I'm going to just show us one or two things about um, Azure Business Continuity um, in terms of the backup and also disaster recovery. Now, basically there are two different things. Backup is a different thing compared to disaster recovery. That both of them are two different thing, things on, on Azure. And the way we configure them on Azure are also quite different. We have some companies nowadays that they just do backup alone. They don't care about um, DR, they don't, you know, think about anything there. They just do backup, normal regular backup, daily backup, incremental backup, incremental backup, uh, what, do, what else again, differential backup and the likes. Why we have some companies that they, they, they invest billions of Naira or let say millions of Naira or dollars for their disaster recovery plan, you know, they can have a primary site and also get a secondary site for their DR or as their DR, meaning that they have a replica of what they are running in the primary site, also in the secondary site. So in a case of um, any disaster or anything, they can always switch uh, without too much downtime with um, low RTO or RPO when it comes to fading over to the secondary site. And uh, we have companies that um, adopt Azure Backup and DR as their 
as their solution or as their tool. Why we have some other third party tool that that we can also that companies can also make use of. But our focus today is Azure. Um, the first thing about so let me talk about um, site recovery. You know, site recovery helps and ensures that we have business continuity by keeping our business apps and workloads running whenever there's an outage. So whenever there's an outage or anything, you know, you feel over to your secondary site, your users might not know too much difference. Like they might not be aware of the disaster or the or the outage, but you as an IT person, you know at the back end that, oh, a disaster had um, occurred. But within a few minutes or seconds, can always switch to your DR sites. But when it comes to backup, you know, if you're doing normal backup and there's an outage or there's a, there's, there's a failure, you know, There'll be, there'll, there'll be a lot of downtime because you need to start returning from the backup. There's nothing like filling over to the DR sites or secondary site because backup does not come with a secondary site unlike a DR. You know, DR has a secondary site, but backup does not have a secondary site in the sense that I can't fill over to that secondary site whenever there's an outage. What I can do in terms of backup is so for my tape or wherever I'm backing up to, I can just do a restore, start downloading the old data and restore. Data. So what does site recovery provide when it comes to Azure? It provides a simple BCDR solution. What I mean by BCDR, that's business continuity disaster recovery solution. And also Azure has enabled, has given us that um, privilege to back up both on-premise machines, probably running on Hyper-V, VMware, or a physical server to Azure, very similar to that. So there's a tool on Azure called Azure Site Recovery, and also there's a tool for backup called Azure Backup for the regular backup. Okay, so um, I have a few slides to show us before we move to the demo. And um, probably I'd like to um, crave your indulgence, uh, uh, Paul, that in case we don't finish the demo today, we can always schedule a time again next week to continue the demo. So, but I would like you also to understand some basic concepts or things about backup and DR before we start jumping into demo. Because I noticed that these are this is one of the things that we miss as an IT person. We just jump into the practical or the demo without understanding the rudiment or the fundamentals of what is going on. And that's why I like how Paul started this class last week with the basic things about Azure before you can move. So we are still at the primary stage or the level one, all these things, all these topics before we move into the advanced stages in Azure. So what are the causes of IT disasters? Can we all see my screen, please? Okay, so we have um, power failure, we have IT um, hardware failure. Can you see that um, power failure is always on the on the I, I7 comes to operational failure. We have the natural disasters and we have human caused events. And from my slide, I've categorized each failures like the power failure, the IT hardware, the network, IT software, and um, on that operational failure. So all these three things can cause um, disaster in, in, a, in a company or in an organization. So these are one of the two things. And probably right now, we can say COVID-19 is causing a disaster for some companies or organization at the moment. For companies that doesn't have that workload in Azure, it might cause a disaster for them because all what they have right now is, is on-premise servers. And since there's a login, nobody can go to the office and turn on any server. So that's a disaster at the moment. So we can put COVID-19 on that natural disaster. Any objection? Hello, any objection about that? No. OK, so thank you. Um, so basically, so these are the causes of IT disaster. So what do we mean by um, resi resiliency? So as an IT or as a IT administrator or system administrator or a cloud or anything, we need to start thinking about resiliency when it comes to operating our workloads um, on-premise or, or in the cloud, AWS, Azure, or any, any of the cloud services. So it's not about responding to, uh, it's not about avoiding failure. So, a DR plan, plan or backup anything does not, it's not about avoiding failure, it's about responding to failures whenever there is a failure. So resiliency is the ability of a system to recover from failures and continue to function. So whenever there's a disaster or there's an outage, the that resiliency must be there as an organization to recover from these failures and continue to function. Please, one minute.
Okay, so to continue to function. So, like I put in my example, about, so that resiliency spirit as an organization gives you that um, ability or ability to just, you know, respond to failures whenever it comes. So the goal of resiliency is to return the application to a fully functioning state whenever there's failure, following a particular failure. So we have three important um, aspects of resiliency. We have the high availability, we have the disaster recovery, uh, recovery and we have the backup. So high availability means that oh, in my primary site, your application, whenever there's a failure, you switch over to the secondary site, where meaning that okay, I have two instances of uh, two instances of an application running in my data center or my cloud. So whenever there's a failure, just like availability set, I can always switch if a particular server of VM is faulty or have a particular and a particular issue, I can always switch to the second game. That's high availability. But when it comes to disaster recovery, so I have a primary site and also have a secondary sites. You know, I have a lot of banks, so I'm aware that, I, not I'm aware, uh, there are a lot of banks in Nigeria that, um, that have spent millions of Naira on their secondary side, like I know of a part of millions of Naira, and they don't joke with that secondary site because they do what we call a, a, a DR um, or a failover drill, like every quarter, to be sure that the secondary site is as, um, is as important as the primary sites. So these are the three major aspects or government of resiliency. Then the last one is backup. So whenever there's a data corruption, you can always delete and restore the normal regular backup from your original to back um, to the. Uh, so you can always recover from the backup file and restore to the original environment. Um, please, are we all following? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, thank you. So, if you have any questions, please always put it on the chat window, and we would um, respond. I will respond to to it. Okay, so that's all about resiliency. So, I talked about HA, that I have ability DR. So, I have ability the ability of an application to continue running in a LD state without any uh, significant downtime. There is the ability of your uh, of your application to recover from a major incident. So when we are designing our resiliency as an as an IT administrator or a cloud administrator or anything, we must understand availability requirements. How much downtime is acceptable in my organization? What is my RPO? What is my RTO? So I need to just talk about these fundamentals before we move into the demo because you know so that we can all fully understand what backup and DR means. So you need to understand what is my downtime, what is acceptable downtime. What is the or um, how much will it cost me to to how much will I lose if there's a downtime? Um, and then yeah, like, what is the potential downtime cost to your business? And what investment? How much will it cost me to make my application highly available? So these are the few questions we need to ask ourselves. What the organization needs to ask uh, itself when it comes to a job uh, when it comes to backup and DR. So if you can answer these questions very well, then you will have the right uh, mentality when it comes to having a secondary plan in case of disaster or a failure. So resiliency in Azure. So Azure provides resiliency as a platform and solution through global largest data center footprint. You know, we have data centers scattered all over the world. So we have that resiliency in, in, um, in Azure, sorry. So, Residency solutions that customer can use in Azure. We have the so when it comes to database, so we have you know we have different workloads. So when it comes to database, the residency services you can use in Azure is Azure Backup, Azure SQL, or MySQL database um, solution. When it comes to workload, your application, you make use of Azure Backup or Azure Site Recovery. Then when it comes to virtual machine on Azure, the, the residency services that you can use that you can make use of uh, availability set. ASR and um, backup. So, and so when it comes to storage, we all know local you know, redundancies, geo or zone, whatever um, redundancy solution you want to make use of. So, these are the, the resiliency services we can make use of in Azure. But my only focal um, area point at the moment will be the Azure backup and Azure site for recovery. So, after my slides, I think I have it slides again about we'll move into demo of each on um, different scenarios. So when it comes to so this Azure Compute Resilience Solution, so for my backup, 
my virtual machine in Azure. So we can back up from your virtual machine to Azure. Uh, yeah, that's Azure virtual machine. You can back it up. Um, your on-premise VMs, you can back them up. Your on-premise Bisco servers you can also back them up and different applications like that. So this is the typical architecture of how Azure backup is when it comes to Azure virtual machine. We have the agents, excuse me, we have the agents, we have the OS, uh, we have the different disconnected to the VM. So you have the backup agents on the machine, then it takes a snapshot or does a VSS, does volume shadow um, um, snapshots, then it moves the backup data to, to a vault, to what we call a vault in Azure. So you can see the Azure backup service doing the migration or the, sorry, the backup from the VM to what we call um, a vault in Azure. And what do you mean by a vault? A vault is just an, it's a storage entity where we store data in Azure. That's just the simplest, the simplest meaning of a vault, a storage entity where data are stored or is stored in Azure. So, um, so okay, Azure backup architecture. Okay, I have another one here. So we have the one for mass um, agents. And what do we mean by the mass agent? The mass agent is called Microsoft Azure Recovery Services Agent. So we have different scenarios also. I can decide to be backing up my files and folders to Azure, probably from my Azure VM, from a physical server, or from a VM running on, I, on IPAB or VMware. So in that kind of scenario, I can make use of the mass agenda as a Microsoft Azure Recovery um, Services Agent. So the agent back up data from your machines to a recovery vault in Azure. So let me give you a typical scenario, a real life scenario. Um, I did a backup for, for an organization like, I mean, I think three or four years ago. Um, they were, so they have this CCTV in the environment. It's a very popular company in Nigeria, in, in Lekki. They have a CCTV um, in their environment. And what they do weekly is that they back up the video feeds to a particular server in their data center. So every Friday or every two weeks, they change the hard disk, like they remove the tape, they slot in another disk. Then once that one is filled up, they remove the external hard disk. So they have different copies of hard disk, different number of um, different hard disk piled up in their data center. So when, another, when the particular hard disk is filled up, they slot in another hard disk. So it was like getting uh, complex for them to manage all those number of hard disks in their data center. And so, mm -hmm. We all we introduced when where you know my former company we introduced what we call Azure files and folder backup to them. So with that, what we did was just install the agent on the server that collects the video feed and that agent. So we installed this mass agent inside that server. So every night, I think every 11 p.m. every day, the mass agent moves or back up the machine, the files and folder where the video feeds are going to. It backs it up to Azure every day, so they don't need to you know do deal with hard disks buying hard disks every month or tape or anything so that's another so that's a typical scenario where we can use files and folder backup and uh, some other scenarios where we can make use of that so um please are we following any questions so far yeah we're good okay okay thank you so the next thing is also so another typical scenario is a uh, major backup server or dpm on-prem so I can back up, so you backing up my whole VM or backing up my whole server or backing up the virtual machines and my Hyper-V, I, I can make use of what, what we call Azure Backup Server. So Azure Backup Server uses one of the DPM um, um, functionalities when it comes to backing up um, VM itself to Azure. What do you mean by DPM? DPM is called Data Protection Manager, which is part of System Center Suite which is a private cloud thing. So the, so the DPM is a robust, it's kind of a robust enterprise backup and recovery system that also contributes to your VCDR strategy by um, facilitating the backup and recovery of your data enterprise data. So companies make use of DPM also, but Azure Backup Server makes of one of the functionalities or features of DPM for the backup to Azure. So in this kind of scenario, we have the customer HQ, we have the Windows Server, we have the Active Directory, so I can get an Azure backup server or DPM or install DPM. So the DPM backs up my Hyper-V VM, my files, my SQL database, backs them up to um, Azure site, um, Azure site recovery. And another thing I want us to know is that um, it's a typical question like, what can I back up? People ask on-premise, Azure VMs, Azure file shares, 
SQL servers in Azure VM, Sapana databases, those are the things that you can, and we have much more than this that you can back up to um, Azure. Um, the next slide, okay, so before we start this backup and the day out thing, you need to plan, you need to plan for this. You need to plan for the network bandwidth. If I'm backing up from my own premise, not even from Azure to Azure. If I'm backing up from my own premise environment, I need to plan the network bandwidth. I need to plan the storage in Azure. I need to plan the compute capacity. So uh, in Azure, we have what we call the ASR, the planning tool or something like that. So we need to plan all these things effectively before we can successfully have a DR site running fine in Azure or in a secondary site. So, so this is a typical scenario of using Azure Site Recovery to back up your, uh, your environment in the primary location or primary site to a secondary location or a secondary site. So this is what we call, so this particular page is, uh, is the Azure to Azure scenario. So I have my source environment in East US and my target environment in um, Central US. So I have my storage account, my VM, everything. So I can back up to, so I do what we call site recovery to this target environment. So it's replicates my workload um, continuously from the source to the target environment. I remember there's an outage, I can do what we call a failover. So a failover to the secondary site. Meanwhile, why we are planning for the failover? Um, I think Azure has um, a failover RTO of two hours. I think maximum of two hours. I can always confirm that, but the last time I checked, I two months ago, I think the maximum was two hours for the RTO. So I can always fill over from the source to my destination seamlessly whenever there's an outage. And the beauty of this is that when I, once I configure my ASR or site recovery on Azure, I can do what we call a test failover to see um, how long it should take me to recover my, to, so I can calculate my RTO or my RPO, how long it should take me to recover my, my, my workload or my application and how much data I might lose while recovering that particular workload or application. So we can do a test failover. So before you do the production, like the real time failover, whenever there's an outage or a failure. Like I said, companies run what we call a DR drill, like it wants every quarter to me to be, to be sure that the secondary site is running fine and LD, just like the primary site. So typical workload support, wow, this is awesome. So typical workload support in ASR, so these are the things I can replicate. So replicate Azure VM to Azure, so I have an active directory. So all these things are the things that we can replicate. Replicate an IPAB VM to a secondary site, yes, when it comes to workload of uh, Azure. So we have different workloads and the different scenario for Azure site recovery. Probably at the end of this class, Paul can share this with everyone to go through again, because I need to rush because of time. Um, so I think I have two slides more after this. So the complete disaster recovery solution. So this is a typical um, scenario. So for my VMware, oh, sorry. So for my VMware, I can move to Azure. For my, I, from, I'm, I'm Hyper-V, I can do Azure site recovery to Azure. From my physical server, running Windows or Linux, I can also move it, do, um, a backup to Azure, you want anything from AWS also. So Azure is wide open for any scenario. So for from AWS also, I can also do a side recovery to Azure. Then um, VM to, so I can, so when it comes to, so Azure site recovery is not used for, oh, from my on-premise or from Azure to Azure alone, I can do from a primary site to a secondary site. For instance, I can do from a particular virtual machine manager to another virtual machine manager. I can do from physical or VMware to VMware. So I can make use of that too. So the two is like, in quote, open source, not just peculiar to, to from on-prem to Azure alone. I can move from one primary site to a supported secondary site, in quotes. Um, so basically, uh, the next thing is to do the demo. Um, but before we move to demo, I don't know if there's any question before we jump into demo. Um, one minute, any question before moving into demo? Okay, I guess no question. Um, okay, so... Mark, let's start with your question. Okay, please go ahead. 
I'm trying to figure out if there's a provision to capture the data that will be that are that are going to be lost during that um, period when you are doing the test to check out okay uh, any data that will be lost within the time of that failover. Is there a a, a provision for capturing those data somewhere, being able to recover them? Okay, so um, thank you, uh, Ms. Ben. Uh, apparently, there's no um, how I put it, there's no application or there's no solution that can help us to capture such data. The reason why I said that at the beginning, we need to be we need to run what we call a test waiver so that we can understand how much RPO or how much data will be lost whenever the real disaster happens or occurs. So there's no how we can capture the particular data whenever there's a during the failover or when we're running the failover at that particular moment. There's no how we can capture that particular data loss. But that's why it is best for us to run a test, a drill regularly so that I can know that, okay, my RPO, you no know, RPO does with data loss, the acceptable number of data that you can afford to lose whenever there's a fee, there's an outage. So that will give us an idea of, okay, that, okay, I'll lose data for five minutes behind, I'll lose data of um, two minutes behind. But when it comes, that's why backup or a failover for SQL database is very peculiar. It's very peculiar com com compared to normal VM or server that runs just normal application. When it comes to SQL database, and you can also make use of with the um, HA or with the ASR um, two on Azure. Then um, you can also make use of the um, different SQL backup scenario or side recovery scenario, like the availability group, the replication scenario that are particular to SQL. But to capture the particular data loss, you can't capture it. But the best thing to do is run a DRG so that we can have an understanding or a documented RPO for the organization that whenever there's a disaster, we can lose data of five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, so. Yes, I have a question. What is RPO? Okay, RPO is a recovery point objective. Recovery point objective, meaning that this is the amount of data I can afford to lose whenever there's an outage. So whenever there's an outage, you can recover from the outage. What is the amount of data you can afford to lose as an organization? The banking industry, you know, RPO must, RPO must be in seconds. So they deal with transactions, money. So they can't afford to lose data more than maybe 20 seconds. That's, that's, so that's what we call RPO. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, sir, I have a question too. Can I go ahead? Yes, please. Okay, so um, in the case, I had a system I was trying to fill over. So mm -hmm. in the process of, uh, it was a Zen server. So after filling, filling it over to Azure, it came online, but I was unable to boot into it because it was showing a blue screen. So um, with um, research I made, I heard that um, a Zen server um, does have um, boot, uh, boot drivers that does not support Azure. A boot driver does not, um, well, I'm not sure about that particular statement. To be sincere with you, I'm not sure about that particular statement. But did you open the open um, support with Azure with Microsoft to look into that boot scenario? Yes, yes. yes I okay. did. Okay. So and were they able to support you? No, currently they told me the same issues that um, they might have to um, put it on a Hyper V and clear those drivers from the Zen server. So uh, I was just going back to the statement you made where you said um, it supports any OS and all. So because I've encountered this issue and we have uh, multiple VMs who like to move to Azure, but if we're going to be going through this process of moving large amount of VM and putting it them on Hyper-V and removing such drivers from that, that would be really stressful. Okay, but where are you coming from? Because look at my this particular slide, you know, under repeat Hyper-V VMs to secondary side or to, okay, it's, to Azure it's supported. Okay, I can see it is supported. So um, I think what we can do is, um, I cannot give a direct answer now because Apparently, I need to investigate why you're having that boot issue. If I have my tools to investigate, I can't just say this is the right answer for that particular question. But if the support um, has given you a particular solution, which you think when you are moving a volume of servers, you can't be going through that stress, then, then we might also, you might also look at some other strategies that can help you over come that okay scenario. i just want to find out because um there was a mention of um, third party tools that could um automatically from start help me um clear source drivers like prepare the disk 
when it, before okay. um I fell over. So I don't know. I wanted to pick your brain if you had um such uh, names of um softwares like that I could use. Uh, uh, okay, I can I can always help you say it and get back to you through Paul or probably on the group. I can okay, just no, please no, remind no, me. No, I can always help you. Yeah, and also I'll just give me the scenario of what happened in the group and I will research um on it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to move into the demo. Every other questions would be okay. Questions, great to see you. Okay, okay. So every other questions will be answered probably during the demo or after um the demo. Um, just a minute, please. Uh, okay, where's my machines? So I have my machines ready for the demo. I have my DC. So the scenarios I want to go through with us tonight, which probably if we cannot finish uh, in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna schedule another time next week while we'll talk to Paul uh, so we can complete our demo. So I have different scenarios in my mind to share with us or to walk through with us. So for my, I have, I have two VMs, Voltron VM1 and Voltron VM2. Um, then I have my DC, all of the, everything I all joined to my domain because I make use of all these guys every day. Then I have my Voltron HVM. My Voltron HVM is my VM, like my nested VM. So I have um, Hyper-V running on that guy and some other VMs inside the particular, this particular Voltron HVM, VM, H, Voltron HVM. So we're going to make you, so we're going to do Azure backup for some of these VMs. We'll do Azure backup while it is running. We'll do files and folder backup. We'll do Azure backup uh, while the VM is shut down because there's a particular thing I want to show us in that scenario. And we'll do ASR for one of the VMs. Then we'll do Azure backup for the Voltron HVM. See, so this Voltron HVM will serve as our on-premise environment. Then we'll also do Azure ASR for this particular on-premise, in quote, on-premise environment. Okay, so the first one is to start with a backup of um, Azure backup for um, Voltron HVM. So I want to show us how we do the normal regular backup. So for S part in the house, this might be you know, you know, child's play or you know, you know. But for new for, for new guys around us, just try to follow the step by step um, way of doing backup on Azure. I can come to the properties of my VM of this particular VM and click backup as it go. Uh, where's backup? I can click backup from here, and you know, just a click. X, just a click, I can enable backup. And uh, this for a particular VM. Perventure I have more than one VM and I want to give, do backup for them at once, give them the same recovery plan, uh, recovery points, uh, the, the same um, retention period and the likes, you know. I can just come here and do a search for backup and search for, I'll show us that. But so from here, let me just start with this. I can just do, so if I don't have any vault, you know, like I said, vault is, an, is a storage entity that stores our data when we are making use of Azure backup or site recovery. So I can create a new vault, give the vault a name, put it in my resource group, and um, choose my backup policy. Backup policy means that, okay, I want to retain my backup data for X number of days, X number of years, or X number of months. So I can always configure my backup policy and my backup schedule. I can do daily, I can do weekly, and I can choose the time, probably every 6 p.m., do a backup and the time zone, retain instant recovery snapshot. So after two days, you delete the snapshot that you've taken from the backup. So it does a snapshot, creates a snapshot for you after each backup. So I can see after two days, delete, every two days, delete the snapshot. Then retention is that my data, I can retain my data for a week, um, month, or, Probably, yeah, depends on what I want to do. So I can just go with the default, give it a name, my vault, my vault. Okay, so put it in the resource group. I can do a daily backup, weekly or monthly backup. So I can just enable backup as it go. Very straightforward and very simple, but in case I want to do for a group of machines in my environment, in my, in my, in my, in, in Azure, so I can come here and search for recovery vaults. So I can come here, search for my recovery vaults, 
create a recovery board and um, so you can give it a name. So put it in my RG, my resource group. So resource group also is like a, a container where you put your workloads or your resources for to reduce um, latency amongst when it comes to communication amongst those resources. So, and also to itemize your workloads effectively in Azure, you put them in your resource group. So I can give it a name also, probably I say Voltron Box. Um, I'll put it in my region, my West Europe, which is very common to us here in this part of the world. And um, so once the vault is created, I can now initiate backup for all my resources or for all my VMs. Like I said earlier, you can do it by individual VMs, uh, but if I want to do a group of VMs just once, I can just do it from here. And also this thing too, apart from using GUI, you can also use partial. It is, you can also use partial to, if you're trying to avoid GUI, if you are used to CLI, you can always use partial to enable all this, but I'm going through all that now. So I go to my vaults that I've created, so I can add, for now, if, we can, if I come here, there's no backup item, everything is zero. No replicated item, everything is zero. So I can come here and click on my backup. Where is my workload running? I pick Azure. Like I said, so we can even backup from Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is just like bringing an Azure to your on-premise or data center. You know, the same Azure uh, look and feel and everything, you bring it down. So instead, of this, instead of this guy running in the public cloud, you, you are bringing that to your own private cloud in your environment. That's what we call Azure Stack. So the same portal look, everything, but you are running it within your environment. So, and it's a very big investment, but we're not going to that now. So I'm running my resources from Azure. Uh, I want to back up my virtual machines and I click on backup. I can choose my policy also. Okay, I want to create a new policy to run for each X number of days, keep my data for X number of days, but let me just go with the default just because of time. So I will go with the default policy. Anything gives me, I'm fine with it. Let's roll together. So I see the list of VMs in my resource group. So if I have VMs outside this particular resource group, any VM outside this resource group will, will not be captured at all. So I pick probably my DC or anyone. I'm not going to touch this guy now because I need it for something. I don't need, I won't touch this one too. Okay, I can touch this now. I think it's the shutdown. So I'm going to pick this VM2 and um, click backup. So I can enable backup for that group of machines in my environment. So, so those are the two typical ways of backing up our our resources to Azure, resources running within Azure to the same Azure. So that's the typical way of doing that. Um, okay, so I've had a lot of questions. There's a typical question that comes to people's mind that, okay, you're running your workload in Azure. Why are you backing up to the same Azure? What if the whole Azure comes down and everything goes out and there's an outage, Azure is down, everything. Well, that is very rare. Not all regions go down at the same time. That's very, that I can guarantee you. Some region might have a little outage and within a few minutes, it will be, the region will be restored. So not all regions go down at the same time. A few regions can go down at the same time, but not all the whole Azure, everybody going down at the same time. That is very, very rare. And even the regional outage is also rare. Like all the whole region down, it's always rare, but once in a while it might, Happen so you can have your probably your vote in another region so that even if anything happens to your West Europe, for instance, or East US, you know that oh, the other region probably it's fine at that moment. You can always restore or work also from there. So that's all about the backup. So that's how we do normal Azure backup when it comes to Azure virtual machines. There's a particular thing I want to point out here. Um, uh, if I go to my, okay, if I go to this backup, if I click on this backup, um, okay, still backing up. Okay, I've not done the backup now. Okay, so I need to back up. What I did was to initiate the backup process, but I've not actually done the backup. So I need to click on the backup now.
to to start the backup, to to start backing up. So what I intend to show us, I might not show us now. So after the backup is done, so I initiate the backup now. Uh, let me see this other person. You know, we created backup for this person too. Yeah, so I need to initiate. So if I want to back start the backup now, you know, remember during my backup process when I was initiating it, there was a policy. Probably the policy is to start backing up as from tomorrow or something, which we did not configure. We just made made use of the default. So if I want to start backing up now, I can click backup now. Meanwhile, this does not affect my policy. My policy will still take place whenever, you know, depending on the time I set for the backup to start. Or yeah, so probably once the backup is done, I can show us something um but there's one lovely thing you need to see when a machine is running and when a machine is down you are doing backup at the same time there's something i'll point out which people don't sometimes don't realize so once the backup is done we can always come back to these two guys uh so you can view your jobs whenever there's an alert in the last 24 hours probably there's a, there's an issue with the backup you can come here and check and if there's no issue you move on um i don't like seeing warnings or or danger or anything. So initial backup pending, which I've initiated. So I think that should be running by now. Uh, let me view my jobs to be sure that it is running by now. So my initial backup is in progress. So once that backup is done, I'm sure I want to see this warning sign again. Because whenever I say warning sign, I'm always, you know, my heart is always beating fast. Oh, what is the problem again? So that's the life of a cloud engineer or architect. Okay, so that's all about the backup from Azure VM to Azure and the like to same Azure. The other scenario I want, to, I want to point to us is files and folder backup. I talked about, oh, I did for a company, we back up their video feed, their CCTV video files to Azure every day. So how did I do it? I made use of what we call Azure files and folder backup because it was so easy for us because the CCTV video feeds we're going or footages we're going to a folder in that server so it was easy for us to pick that folder and do a replication or a backup to azure so i'm going to log into one of the servers and show us how we do the azure files and folder backup so as this other one is going on i'm logging to my server so this is the server my votron vm1 it um gonna show us that sorry Okay, so um, I have the machine. So I'm going to continue my portal from here. So I have the my recovery votes. So where is my folder located? I let me have a particular folder. So even we as an engineer, your laptop back then, there are times where I I do files and folder backup on my personal laptop to back up some files to Azure. So whenever I get to the office, I use the office internet, you know, to move those files, folders to, to back up, just personal folders. Mm -hmm. So you can also make use of that, these files and folder backup on your own laptop too. If you're looking for a backup um, storage or entity that you can make, so make use of, you can make use of Azure. If you have an Azure subscription, be backing up your files to that um, area. You have an hard disk or something to for a secondary backup. So I'm going to create a folder here and name it, um, give it a name. Uh, Azure, by, um, Azure by Moonlight. By Moonlight. Okay, so we're going to back up this file to Azure from this VM. So the first thing I need to do is which vote am I using at the moment? I'm using this particular my vote. So I can use of any vote actually. Let me use this Votron vote. Um, I click backup. So clicking backup takes me to this page. And uh, where's my workload running? This time around, I'm not going to click on Azure because in the recent yes, my file is running or my folder is running inside an Azure VM but I won't make use of Azure as where my workload or where is the workload running. Because I make use of Azure, I won't see the option to pick files and folder. Files and folder is different from Azure file share. Azure file share is one of the type of storages we have in Azure. The file share, we have the block storage and the likes, Azure file share and the likes. So I won't pick, pick that. So what I can pick here is on-premise. Now, once I pick these on-premises, 
I have the option to pick files and I have the option to pick files and folder. So we can we see this. So we can pick Azure V, Azure uh, Hyper-V virtual machine, VMware and the likes, exchange, uh, system state of your machine and the likes or bare meta recovery. So I pick files and folder. I click on prepare, then click on prepare infrastructure. Sorry, are we all following any? Please let me know if I'm rushing the, um, the demo. Let me know if I'm talking too much or rushing my conversation. No, please always call me back. I'll be willing to go back and explain again. Okay, so now it is now because I need to back up my files and folder for my VM or for my on premise. So then so it doesn't have to be a VM that can be a, a, an on premise server, your laptop, anything that you know that has a file and folder inside running. It can be a you know, anything. When I'm in as much as a files and in as much you have files and folders running inside that guy. So I would so I'm gonna download the agents. So this is the mass agent, the Microsoft Azure Recovery um, Service Agents. I'm gonna download the agents. And there's what we call a vault. A vault is just like the password to that particular vault. Because you know, this backup will be going over the internet and you have to keep everything secured. So where you are going to, at least, you know, you are trying to back up to a vault. The vault will ask you where you're coming from. At least you have the password to enter, to come, in, to come inside. So this vault is just like the, the, the credential to register that server to that particular bot. Okay, this server is registered to this bot. Okay, you can come in, bring, bring, up, bring your data into this, into my storage or anything. Wow, I have five minutes more. Okay, so I'm gonna download this um, bot credentials. Next thing is schedule backup and the like. So click on the mass agents. I'm gonna install the mass agents now. Did I click it twice? Sorry about that. Okay, so um, the solution starts. In the meantime, okay, let's go on. Uh, okay, so it's a very straightforward installation. Just click next. I don't have a proxy. Proxy means that probably there's something that connects my my my, my workloads or my VMs or server to the internet. So my VMC is not directly connected or my server is not directly connected to the internet. I go through another gateway or a thought, or is that, let me put the gateway in quotes that connect everybody to the internet. That's what we call a proxy. But I don't have any proxy in my environment. I move to the next thing. Oh, recommended. Okay, do the updates. You, you are free to do the updates. Okay, so required software, I have them installed already. .NET Primo 4.5 and my PowerShell, they're all installed. Um, so wait. So very simple process, you know, very straightforward. And um, so meanwhile, let's check the, uh, as this is going on, can we just go back and check our backup jobs for this? If I can point out, okay, so it's still in progress. And uh, what else, let's see if this is done. This should be, should also be in progress. Uh, we are, sorry. We are jobs thing in progress so because this depends on the size of the VM. I think my VM size is like, I can't remember, but, but this backup depends on the size of your VM also. So I will proceed to register. So I'm going to proceed to register this particular server to my vault. And how do I locate the particular vault I want to register the server with? I will make, I need to make use of the vault credentials. So this particular credential give me access to that particular vault. Um, so look for the vault credentials. Meanwhile, this vault credentials expires, I think, every 24 hours. So if I fail to make use of this vault credential by this time tomorrow, I might need to generate another or download another vault credential. I've experienced the situation, and then there was a time I, you know, I was wondering what is happening. Uh, this vault credential is not working. I, I just, you know, I don't remember that, man. This thing was done like yesterday, so I can't make use of it anymore. So just please note that it expires every 24 hours. So it registers my server to the vault. And uh, yes, 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 this is very, very important. Your passphrase keys. We use the passphrase keys to decrypt your data during restore. 
You know, anybody can get make can get hold of your data. That is why Azure, when it comes to security, just be guaranteed, be rest assured that nobody is tapping with your data in the data center because. Once I back up this guy, this guy is encrypted. These files and folder, or anything I back up is encrypted. Especially this particular scenario, the files and folder, the files and folders are encrypted. The data inside that particular entity or container are encrypted. Encrypted. So before you can decrypt it, you need to generate this passphrase script. If you misplace this passphrase script, please, you can't get this data back. It is gone for life. It, there's no way. Even Microsoft, if you open a support with Microsoft. They won't get it for you because they don't have access to your password key. You are don't have access to this key, just like keyboard. When it comes to keyboards, keys and secrets. So this is your keys that you must keep and guide jealously. Let me tell you a true life story. I've misplaced a password key before, and you know, you just have to look for a way to recover this data back. But you know, there was no even we have to we have to forget about it. But but so you must keep this key. Uh, this car, uh, you must solve it. so we need to save this key somewhere. Somewhere, so the recommended um thing is that don't save it on the same server that you're backing the files and folder from, keep it somewhere, probably on your laptop, somewhere safe. Because if this server should crash, just the keys and everything goes with it. So, but for this scenario, I'm just going to put it inside this my folder here and I click finish. So, that, that's the one you are storing it on this, on this server. Please don't, you know, they would like to give you, you know, warn you about it because once you miss it, that's the end. Oh, this is 30 already. Paul, please, can you give me like five minutes to wrap up? Then we'll continue next this time next week. Hello, Paul. I think Paul is on the call at the moment. Okay, so give me five minutes, guys, and... um. We will I'll fix your time next week to continue because we are still with backup. We've not even done ASR itself. So let me just finish the backup scenarios I have for us. Then once um, I get the slots next week, then we'll delve into site recovery itself because it, it's a different technology and a different configuration compared to this. Okay, so it's trying to register my server with the with the vaults. So as that is as this particular guy is going on, let me check my job here if it is done. Oh goodness, the job is still going on. Um okay, stay going on. Okay, so it's trying to register the server to the box. In the meantime, as this is going on. You know, we talked about a scenario of Hyper-V environment, your on-premise environment. You want to back up your VMs in that Hyper-V also to Azure, like configure Azure to on uh, Azure backup on that. So I come to this person too. So this is my on-premise, in quotes, on-premise server. I have my Hyper-V running. I have a Voltron HVVM running inside the, inside the VM also. So I can also come here and click on, click on recovery, recovery sites. Hello, hello, Mr. Tunde. Yes, please. Yeah, I was looking for. We can for run this up to 8 p.m. Yeah. 8 p.m. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So, parameter, I don't finish by 8 p.m. Please, can I request for a slot next week also to continue? Ah, uh, yes. You are. You are. You are. You are permitted. You are good okay. now. <laughs> can I? I may not be able to finish ASR today because what we are still doing at the moment is see Azure backup as a technology. We've not even done anything in ASR at all. So we are doing different scenarios, the virtual machines, the physical servers, and, and files and folder. Okay, so uh, where am I? Okay, I'm on a VM. Okay, so, so like I said, so let's see if this guy is done. Warning. So don't be scared. This means that, oh, you are saving this passphrase inside that particular VM, inside this particular source VM. Be careful, that's the meaning of this warning. You know, I remember the first time I did this, I was so scared, oh, what's the meaning of this warning again? Because I don't like saying warning or danger or any warning source danger or anything sign that is not working, you know. But that's part of it, you need to fix it if there's any issue. So, nothing to fix here, I'll launch the agents. Um, so this is the particular agent. So for us, many, I think, Backup comes in, we are doing a Z900 or a Z103 or thereabouts. I think there are questions on backup outside recovery, I think so, which, you know, 
comes up. Yeah, so please, Azure Backup and DI is important. It's an important service in Azure too. Okay, so this is my agent, my mass agent installed on the machine. So remember, my focus is to back up my files. Let's assume we have video footage CCTV going to that particular folder. Let's assume. So I need to do a backup, you know, every day to Azure instead of making use of tapes or external drive in my data center environment. So uh, I've registered the server, so I don't need to register the server again. What I can do here is to schedule backup. Um, I think we have a question. Okay, okay, just a comment. I'm going to see Okay, thanks. Um, fetching my backup policy, please be fast. I think there was a question before that comment. Okay, please. I would like to know if we can create an active backup system to run concurrently with your life. What's the name? With your life system. Ah, please, Mui, Mui, can you explain what you mean by active backup system to run concurrently yeah. with your system? Um, uh, hello. Yeah, yes, hello. Please. Yeah, I'm trying to say, can you create a form of a redundancy whereby you can have a backup system in case your life system crash, you can fall back on your backup system while you still acts as a backup. Why you are still what? While it acts as a backup, like a disaster recovery okay, system. Yeah. That's a disaster. That's ASR. When I mean, that's when it comes to it. So that's that takes to ASR takes care of that very well. Like you can activate activate it while it is running. You know, your life at the madam particular moment, people cannot connect to there's an outage. It's it's in, in quote down at that particular moment. So it might not be active at that moment. So you know. But if you are but if you are wanting to be active, you can do a test failover with ASR. So you have active active at the same time. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that demo for us. So I have my life running active and my other um, secondary sites, I want to do a test and see how active it is. I can have that active active running for some time together at the same time and see the difference between the two. But so ASR takes care of that, not the Azure backup. So Azure site probably would take care of that perfectly well. Or Azure backup might not take care of that. You know? Backup is that everything is down and to start restoring. And at that moment, it's passive active at that moment, trying to restore. From your backup, and once you restore back to your primary site, you cannot start up your secondary site, primary site again. But ESR thing will take care of your question, which I will show us probably next week when we move into ESR. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Secondly, yeah, thank you very okay. much. Secondly, I wanted to ask, um, what if you are setting up a folder, uh, backing up your folder? Is okay. there way, is there a way you can actually access it from your mobile? Is there a particular um, client? Client software, you download the okay. mobile web, you can actually access the backed up file. Okay. Probably, unless you backed up a system folder, you can access from a mobile device. Okay, as I talking, I want to check my app store and see if I can get this mass agent, which I doubt about. I know Azure has an application, mobile application, but this particular one, I doubt, I don't think there's an application on your mobile that you can use to access it. Well, like, okay. It's no, it's not, you know, it's it's not like the about it's not like one drive that you can access one drive on your mobile and see your files mm -hmm. and folders immediately. But okay. as you as, as this is going on, let me just check my app store. I doubt I don't think there's anything like that. It doesn't have a mobile. Application. But but I, I, yeah, hello. I think one can download the Azure on um Android um on your Android uh, Play Store. And uh, it looks more like the same way you have your Azure, and uh, you could um, go to recovery and um, see your backups, or see um, if your backups are completed or is still in progress. Okay, okay. That's, that's, more. that's more like a that's more like a monitoring tool. Should I can I call it a monitoring tool? Mm. No, it's not a monitoring yeah. tool. Oh. No, what he's talking about that can I like this mass agent now? Can I have it on my mobile phone and say I want to download the backup, the backup files on my mobile phone? I think that's what oh, uh, oh, you mean, right? Yeah, that's no, it's, it's, it's not possible <laughs> no, at this no. time. Not possible. It's not <laughs> it's not possible. possible. I just confirm, I just take my phone now. I can't get anything like that. It's not right. possible. Thank you. 
But what you can do is, you know, like what I said, you can always have access to your Azure application on your mobile device. You can find, you find that you can connect to your mobile device, you can connect to a VM on your mobile device, see your files and folders and everything and access them from your mobile device. So, for oh, that's an action point. Take it, write it down, go and give it to Microsoft, please. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. So, we'll go to next. Uh, so, what do I need to back up? Um, this particular thing that we're just looking at that looks very simple. I'm so serious. There's a, this company paid millions of Naira just to deploy this, just to deploy this like five minutes or 10 minutes. But you know that kind of thing, you can't do it within 10 minutes now. You know the trick. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so you have to turn it as a one-week project and you plan around with it very well. Okay, so where's my desktop? Uh, Where's my which sign did I use? Uh, I think it should be here. Okay, so I can pass. So I can set. So I can pick up any folder to back up. But my focus is just okay. I have stuff there that I need to back up. My job more lights or by more lights, and you can also exclude that. So actually, I can add an exclusion that okay. You can back up all the folders, but exclude X folders in case I want to back up all my folders in a particular or my files in a particular folder. I can say okay, back up X all these files, but exclude this particular one, so I can do an execution list also. So, so in that scenario, I will click on next. Uh, define a schedule, just like our default policy, we can define a schedule here, and um, probably backup daily or anything. So let's go move on with the defaults. My rotation, keep this data or backup copies for X number of months, X number of days, X number of weeks, X number of years. Depends on the policy you have in your organization or anywhere you are working from. Then transfer. So I have the online, I have the offline. So Microsoft has made it so simple for us. You don't have a good internet at the moment. You can do the offline backup. And if you have a very good internet, internet and a strong network, you can make use of that to do the initial backup. And subsequent one can do the offline or anyone, it depends on how you want to do it. So if you have a good internet, you can make use of the offline backup and make use of what we call the Microsoft Azure Data Box Disk. So this is a disk that this is a, a box that you need to purchase from Microsoft. And uh, once you purchase that, you will back up to that box, then ship it down to any data center where your vote is, maybe the West Europe and the particular data center or the region wherever your vote is. So it's just similar to, we are used to AWS, similar to AWS, um, uh, what do you call this uh, device, Snowball. So, which is also a data migration and computer device when it comes to AWS. So Microsoft one is Azure Data Box Disk. So you can also transfer to your own um, disk too and ship it down to Microsoft to help you resource. So that's when you're doing the initial backup. So subsequent backup, you can always, you know, initial backup for some people is like terabytes. So you get, so if you cannot, if your network cannot cover that backup period, like in within one day before you move to, because backup runs, your backup should run like every day or something. So if you cannot, if the backup cannot be covered within X number of minutes or hours, if there is, if it's a very large file, you can always make use of this Azure data box disk or your own disk and ship it down to Microsoft data center. The engineers will, will um, copy out your data from there. Um, um, to your vault and from there you can always access you can make always do incremental backup so my internet is good my internet is good for now but i'm still within an azure vm so um next oh okay there's a question are there limits to recovery points on disk for files servers and um, application servers, no. No, you can create as many recovery points as possible. Well. Okay, I can't go back again. Recovery points as you want. And there's no limit to your recovery points at all. So I click on close. So I have this configured already. Remember, I should do backup for 6 p.m. every day. Now this, this is some minutes before eight o'clock. So if I want to initiate the backup now, I can do that now, or I wait till six tomorrow, but I love doing my own backup now, like my first initial backup. I love initiating it now. So I want to back up now. I click yes. Um, I've not done anything. So next, no. 
the thing back up to so the days you should return this back up return back up to fifth tomorrow. Okay, anyone can they pick any other dates? Um, so I can say back up now. So it starts the back up depending on the size of your of your folder. So it does what we call VSS volume shadow um snapshot force. And I mean why well, please note that when you're doing files and folder backup, I've experienced it scenario before you know until we we figured it out we didn't know what was happening because we noticed that backup was failing so when we did the file for that backup of another company if the size of the disk is the the the, the free space if the free space is less than what you are trying to back up to azure if the free space is less than the folder that you're trying to back up to azure backup might fail or will fail because i've experienced that so probably when it was trying to do the volume shadow copy, there wasn't enough free space. So it's looking for a free space that is more or less equivalent, like a more like equivalent to the size of that folder. When during the backup uh, process, it will fail. So what we did back then is was to increase the free space of that disk for that server, and the backup was successful. But we noticed that uh, backup started failing like almost every day. Backup was not going through. So along the line, we figured that out. So get enough free space on your disk while trying to do files and folder back off and you won't experience any form of failure. So this is going on. So I will close this. Uh, let's check if our job is done. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's, it's still running though. This is still, sorry. So this is still running. So, but I would like to point out this particular thing. Now, if we look at this particular register point, I can see crash consistence and um uh, okay and i can see application consistent have you ever noticed any of this before now what do i mean by application consistent remember when i was in this particular backup for this particular vm1 it was running at that moment it was live running when i was in the backup when i was doing, when i was doing for vm2 the machine was shut down at that particular moment it wasn't running so what do we mean by application consistent? It backs up, it backs up your memory content, your IO operations, everything at that moment when the virtual machine is running. It ensures that you have a consistency in your app data before the backup starts at all. So if I want to do a restore, my application guys do, don't need to do any much work on the application. Like there's no data loss or corruption. So the app starts in a consistent state by the time I'm doing my recovery. So that's application consistent. That the application, there's, there's no data loss or anything. It's, it's, it's in a consistent state by the time I'm doing my recovery. That's application consistent. And that was because it was running at that moment. But when it comes to crash consistent, crash consistent snapshot is, of course, when the VM is shut, is, is shut down. At the time of backup, the VM is shut down. And all the data that exists on the disk at the time of backup is captured and backed up to Azure. So the VM is shut down, all the data that are caused or that exists on that disk at the time of backup is captured and backed up to Azure. But the application consistent makes sure that there's a consistency in the app data before backup is done at all by the backup uh, mechanism or process. So in, when it comes to crash consistent, by the time I do a recovery and I boot this machine, um, for example, maybe a database app that's you no know, transaction log and everything for verification. So my guy still needs to come or my app team needs to, end, it to log into this machine to be sure that oh, the apps and everything is consistent. The app data is consistent inside that machine. So those are the two different scenarios. So we have the application consistent, which is more or less the better um, scenario because make sure that there's no data loss in your application. No data is corrupt while you're trying to do the backup unlike the crash persistence. So those are the two things that people don't take note when they are doing their backup to Azure. So make sure your server is running at that moment, your data is running and everything is running when you are doing the backup. So people might say that, okay, what about the data that, the, that enters the server after that backup is done? Now, the way it works is that when I initiate a backup and it start the volume shadow um, snapshot, at the point of that, nothing goes into that particular process at that moment. So any other increment comes in the next day, the backup is taking place. So any other thing comes in the next day, or the next time, or the next minute, because you can do your backup maybe every five minutes or 30 minutes, because how you want to do it, comes in after that particular 
period. Okay, so this is done. My backup is fine. So if I go to my portal and I go to this particular vault, and um, I think on repeated, no, backup items, sorry. So I go to my backup items. Um, is this on the virtual machine? Um, no. I'm looking for my, okay, it should be here. So this is it here. The contents is, the folder we backed up is in my C drive. But I can't see the folder. What you will see is your C, the letter of the disk. So assuming the folder was in my D or E drive, what I will see is the E or D drive. But I won't see the particular folder or anything. I can't see it. So, so what I can do is add, I can... So Preventor, I delete this particular folder. Oh, I've misplaced the folder. Or I did a mistake here. I did the content or something mistakenly, and I need to recover. What I need to do is just recover, click on recover data. Now, the beauty about this scenario is that if the folder sits in another server, let's say server one, and I did the backup in server one, and probably at that moment, I don't have access to server one, I can come into server two, download the mass agent on server two, go through the process of registering server two to that vault. And you know, I'm not backing up anything in server two. But what I want to do is use server to, to use server two and recover my data from Azure to server one. So I can come to server two, click on recover data from another server. So in as much as I have the vault credentials, I can always recover from here and click next. But what I'm recovering from the server, the backup was done from server, from this particular server itself. So I just click on this particular server. Now, I have options to pick from. I can mount the folder I backed up as an external drive, like a drive, like a file share or something. I can mount it to my server. So I can mount it or I recover the old files and folder as a volume to my server, put it back as a volume to my server. Or I can just mount it like, oh, I just want to pick one or two things, mount it and also and disconnect it once I'm done. So I can mount it or attach it to my server as a volume. So I can pick any of these two options depending on what you want to do. So it fetches the volume, uh, click on next. Okay, so can you do test recovery on Azure Backup? Um, Paul, this is, a, this is a typical test recovery that I'm doing. It's like I'm trying to test what I backed up. Hope that answers the question, Paul. And also, I can also come to this person. Okay, I wish this is done. Okay, my backup is done. I can do a quick test recovery also from this end also. But uh, let's finish this particular phase and for that recovery. Probably like you want to check what is happening on so I can mount it. So it mounts the the folder. Uh she's able to see the folder here. Hopefully. When it is done, all things being equal. So as this is going on, uh let's go back to our VM. So I think the backup is done. Oh, everything is marked. Check, check, check. Oh. So everything is fine. So I can just, I can do a recovery without affecting this particular VM. I can restore the VM, this particular VM. Meanwhile, the VM one is still running fine. So, so this also addresses what we didn't ask initially. I think this also addresses that, you know, if I can create an active backup system to run for everything, I, I'm reading. This also address your, addresses your question perfectly well. So I can have this active, I can do a restore with VM, active VM when this particular server, why, why the live server two is going on. So I just back up to does it, so apart from the ASR. So I think on this recovery point, I have just one based on my backup. Now I can create a new VM and I can replace the existing VM but I want to create a new VM. So let us give it a name, Votron VM1, two. So, okay, I, you're welcome in. So um, my network, I can use my existing network, my default subnet, 
I can use okay. I, I wish I have a storage apart from this diagnostic storage account, but let's for this purpose, let's just make use of that. So it's great another VM, active VM, concurrently run concurrently with the other VM. So I can create an active VM, I can restore. So once I click the restore, so by the time I check the list of my virtual machine, I'm going to see that particular virtual machine also running with this VM one perfectly well at the same time. That does not affect my backup though. It doesn't affect the backup policy. Now this guy has been mounted. So I think I can I should be able to see it here by now. So can you see it? It has been mounted as a volume. So I can browse the volume and check my folder. I don't know why it's taking some time. So So desktop, I have my Azure by Moonlight perfectly here. Yeah. So that is fine. I can amount. So that is perfectly okay. Um, for this guy, um, is the backup done? Is the restore done? Okay, restore has been triggered. So what you can do over here is to come to this place. You can check all jobs and see the and see the status of the restore. It's in progress. So once the restore is done, I will see it running under the list of my VMs, active as a live server. So that works fine based on me this question. So um, I think those are the scenarios. Well, I have one more scenario for us for the on-premise environment, which I'll just quickly rush through in the next five minutes. Okay, let's assume this is our on-premise server and I want to do backup of my Photon VM run inside this particular on-premise server. How do I make use of Azure Backup? So this is the last scenario I want to do for Azure Backup with us. So how do I make use of Azure Backup? The first thing I need to do also is to come to my vault. I have a vault that I'm making use of at the moment. Come to this particular vault. Uh, what do I need to back up? Um, I click on Backup. So where's my workload running on? It's an on-premise environment running on my Hyper-V. Virtual is an Hyper-V. What I want to back up is my Hyper-V virtual machine or VMware as it were. It depends on the scenario we are trying to achieve. So now I download, I'm, so I'm going to download what we call Azure Backup Server. If you remember during my PowerPoint presentation, I talked about Azure Backup Server, which is different from also. So Azure Backup Server makes use of the DPM that I talked about. So can you see already using DPM? No, I don't have DPM. So as I'm using DPM, it's true. So I don't have a DPM, but it makes use of DPM features to back up my VM as it's I like my load of the VM from on-premise to Azure. So I'm going to download this agent, which is different from the mass agents that we used at the other, in the other scenario. So as that one is going on, please ignore every background noise at my end here, please. So um, then I'm going to download the vault credentials. Um, I doubt that I can complete this now. Probably I should just stop now because I think this might take more than five minutes to complete. But um, my, yeah. by next week, we're going to so, continue from this particular scenario and, and uh -huh. move into ASR. Yeah, yeah, so we have some questions, uh, Mr. Tunde. Please, you can just attend to the questions. And, uh, oh, we have some questions. Check the chat, me. please. Morning, you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have, um, I have a question. Okay, um, okay, please, can you hold on a minute? Let me just look at the one on the chat. Is it possible for me to move my backup data to another vault? A backup data is peculiar to a particular vault. You can't move them across. It is peculiar to a particular vault. No, you can't move your, move your backup data across a particular vault. No. Okay, please go ahead with your question. Okay, uh, well done, Tunde. So, uh, it, it then means that, or from what were you saying, if I'm to migrate a non premise server content, kind of what part or what content of that server I want to migrate to, um, um, to Azure. So, what you say is first and foremost, the VM must be created on that server, or I can't do it directly, either in form of a folder or uh, or, or uh, file and folder. I need you to clarify that, or you've not demoed that yet. Okay, so do, are you migrating a files and folder? You're migrating, migrating a VM itself, or a content, or content inside the VM alone, like files and the likes? 
If Virtual Machine actually was never created in the first in the first place, it's actually a complete server, but with folders, some files, you understand? So Okay, so if your focus is just on the files and folders, you can make sure of these files and folder back up to you no know, to, okay. to back up the files and folders you know. But if you want to move the whole VM, like replicate or back up the whole VM itself, the whole entity itself. This is the next demo we went wanted to do oh. about to do that, which will continue next week here. Yeah. But okay. what, have... what what if sorry, what if you are trying to do a migration or should I call it replication of some apps and services that is, has been running on the server? But now that you want to go cloud, you understand? Well, how, how do you go about that? Okay, you want to migrate. Okay, you want to migrate from on-premise to Azure, right? Yeah. Like migrate. Okay, so there's a tool that we, that we call Azure Migrate to move okay. your tool. Um, if Paul permits us, so maybe next two weeks I can walk us through demo Azure Migrate with us. Apparently, that's a project I'm working on at the moment for my company. Moving, we are trying to move some workloads to Azure at the moment. So oh. there's a tool that falls. Uh, we call Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate does the analysis for you of how much RAM, how much memory, everything, what will cost you to run this cloud in Azure. And it's also in Azure can also do that scenario. But when you're using Azure for that, Microsoft will recommend that there's a there's a purpose that will come that will recommend you use Azure Migrate, which is the new to migrate to your on-premise workload, on-premise workloads to Azure. Probably in the next two weeks or before the end of April. Is, is that an that. app or something? Oh, um, Azure Migrate. It's also a tool. Okay. Can it be downloaded this time, and, this time? and run on a particular server to, to get the analysis? Okay. So when you use making of Azure Migrate, uh, apparently it's going to create a VM for you in your virtualization, in your virtual environment on prem. Okay. Maybe it's going to create a VM. So that VM, um, there's a name they call it. I can't remember the VM at the moment. There's a name they give that they call it. So you're going to create a VM. So use that VM to run the analysis within your environment. Then, um, like it's like a gateway from your on-premise to Azure. So that VM will do like a analysis of the environment and everything. We want to do an analysis, you use it to do an analysis. And on Azure portal, you will see what you will see the information and the result of what you need before you migrate that particular VM to Azure. Meanwhile, apart from that, you can do an agent migration or agentless migration at the end of the day. So that VM does not you know, disturb you from using. So you can also install, apart from that VM, you will also install, you can also go through, go with agents installation, like I want to install agent on all the VMs, I want to migrate, like use the agent to migrate, or I do agentless. So we are, we are doing agentless, that VM will do the migration for you, act like the, will act like the connector and migrate your workloads to Azure. I can show us this probably if I have enough, if there's another slot for me, apart from this DL thing, I can work us through that lab too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Any other questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Okay. So um, I want to thank Mr. Tunde. I, I I was I was saying to someone. I said this is an Azure SME. It's an <laughs> SME. Someone like why am I calling an SME? For people that are on this section, they they will know that this guy is this guy is a bomb. He's is the is one of the best when it comes to Azure. You know, so I, I've known him for a while now, and I can say he's one of the best that I've seen. Is he, is I want to say thank you, Mr. Tech Tech. Experts, uh... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the question no, uh, that day. <laughs> that, that's the question we treat that day. So it's gonna it's gonna continue this section next week. We still have ASR to to do. We, we are not we, we can't do ASR today because of the time. So next week, he, he will be also be um, presenting to us on ASR, and possibly upper week, he will be presenting to us on Azure Migrate. Uh, I want to really thank him so, so much. He's, he's a very busy man, and uh, for taking time out to come to um, explain this to us. It's a very detailed class. If if I can say, uh, people that are very attentive, they will discover that it's a very detailed class. And he says something, this thing that he did, it's, it's, it's something that companies pay millions of dollars, millions of naira for. And that's why I asked the question I asked. <laughs> that people, people pay millions of naira for, he was able to explain it to us without collecting any dime. So uh, I want to say thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Tunde for for this time and and yes, uh, I want to say thank you and to the uh, to everybody on this call. Yeah, if we have any question on Azure migration or on database, uh, sorry, on backup, we can always put it in the group. Is a member or inside the group, so he can see the questions and answer <laughs> answer some of these questions, sir. Sorry, I'm a silent member. I'm a silent member, sir. Pardon uh, me for that. 